Oh, hello everybody. Zach Hample here. Welcome to my place. Come inside. Take a little look around. By popular demand, we are doing an apartment tour video today. So many comments, so many requests over the years on YouTube. You guys want to see it, so let's get to it. Lots to see. Big game of show and tell starting right now. Okay, first things first, let's talk about the walls here. Magazine pages, everything is covered like you can see. The entire top row around the apartment as we swing around, it's all magazine covers. You won't see the same one twice. Now, I've been decorating my walls like this going all the way back to college, my last apartment as well. And you know what? People accuse me of having walls that look like they're 13-year-old girls. I don't care. I like it. Makes me happy. And if you want to swing over here this way, you can see that there are a lot of intentional placements all over the walls, especially on this wall, where one image seems to interact with another one. For example, we have up here a smoking ad right next to an anti-smoking ad, right? We have a little kid picking his nose, staring right at one of the world's most famous noses, that of Scottie Pippen. You have the ear-biting section right over here, including a lady and her dog. You want to look at one of the locks on the door? Well, if you turn this one, it almost looks like you're tweaking this woman's nose. So there's lots of things like that throughout. It's sort of my game within the game to keep the walls interesting, just to have lots of visual stuff to look at. I hate blank walls, and you'll see another example of that in just a bit. Moving right along to this monster right here, the rubber band ball. I can't tell you how many bands are on it, I wish I knew, but I do know that it weighs 313 pounds. Started this thing when I was four years old with my mom's help, and I have a whole separate video on my channel of this ball in Central Park. Check the description, I'll throw a link to it there as well as some other stuff that we'll get to today. For right now, I'm just gonna put on some safety goggles because that's the number one thing you have to do when you're adding to the ball. I once had a rubber band snap and hit me right below the eye, and I thought to myself, nah, that's never going to happen again. So, pay attention, this is going to go fast. That's pretty much it. However, I do want to get the twists out of the band and make sure that it goes directly around the center of the ball. And that is it. Ta-da! And by the way, VHS tapes right here, a whole wall of them. guys. I'm old, I have a lot of movies like this, and yes, I can actually play them. Follow me back this way. We have the AV closet right here, and people often say, do you have like a VHS player? They're called VCRs, okay? All you kids out there, the tape goes into this slot right here. It's like magic, and that's how you can watch movies. Oh my god. All right. Just give me one second here. Put my phone down. All right. Hand me the camera. Here's a quick look at my business card wallpaper right before we transition over to my big Scrabble rug. I actually used to play competitive Scrabble. Played in a bunch of sanctioned tournaments with the National Scrabble Association and I interned at three National Scrabble Championships. So just one more of the many nerdy things that I do. And I have some big wooden tiles that actually fit on this rug, just enough to spell my name. So if there are any professional woodworkers out there, you feel like making me a complete set of Scrabble tiles, get in touch. I'll invite you over. We can play some big Scrabble together. One reason that I wake up happy every single day of my life is that I have a classic arcade video game machine in my apartment. Arkanoid, that's the game, 1986. True classic. Now I got this machine in 1999 off eBay for 280 bucks. You guys, that's a steal. Now I did have to put some work on it, but definitely worth it. And the following year in 2000, I actually set the world record Arkanoid score. You can see me very briefly in the film, The King of Kong, A Fistful of Quarters. So if you haven't seen that, definitely check it out. And if you have seen it, take another look, you'll spot me in it. And I just love this game. 
I am a little bit stuck in the 1980s, I admit it. I also have an Apple IIgs computer, which was my actual school computer, a gift from my grandparents. Not quite in working order, it would need a few parts. I'm not sure how to go about that, but it's just fun to have this thing sitting here as a memory of my traumatic childhood in school. Yeah, I don't know. Why have a whole bunch of furniture cluttering up your space when you can have the biggest pillow pile in history? So, this is my closet. Um, it's actually more exciting than you might think. Right here in this bag, check this out. We have a five pound bag of green rubber bands and blue rubber bands and red rubber bands and there are some baseballs in here if you want to come a little bit closer we have some in this bucket we have some over here in this bag and if you're wondering where all the baseballs are because I've gotten over 10,000 of them well, they're mostly in storage, and I've also given away thousands of balls to kids and to charities, so I don't have too many baseballs here, but follow me this way into the kitchen. I have some very special balls displayed unceremoniously, and we're going to open this up. Yeah, I'm not proud of this display, but I'm proud of owning the baseballs themselves. So these are some of the best ones that I have. This right here, for example is the last home run that the Mets ever hit at Shea Stadium. And we have a Derek Jeter home run. This was career hit number 3,262. We have Grand Slam baseballs, a Barry Bonds home run, you know, a Brett Gardner Mother's Day home run at Yankee Stadium. We have a ball that was the final out of a Mariano Rivera save, his 313th save. He threw this one to me after the game at the old Yankee Stadium. My 10,000th ball right here, commemorative from Camden Yards, signed by Robinson Cano. He wrote number 10,000 on it. So, yeah, I basically keep the balls here so that they're not in the light. I'd love to keep them out on my table and look at them every single day, but the light would definitely fade them and turn the cowhide covers brown. We don't want that. So, these are the fancy ones. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, don't deny it, please follow me into my bedroom. Yes, come on. Keep coming, keep coming. It's very dark and mysterious and romantic in here. Come on, keep coming, keep coming. Right, so a little more baseball stuff in here. You can see I have a hat of every Major League Baseball team in two rows, alphabetical, of course. Angels through Nationals, Orioles through Yankees. I have every Major League team shirt. Each stack is a league, National, American. Again, alphabetical by team name, because sometimes I'm just in a rush. Gotta get out the door, gotta get to Yankee Stadium in time for BP. I don't need to be digging through all these hats and shirts. So, I don't have a huge jersey collection, but I am especially proud of this one. I know I'm not a Yankee fan, I've mentioned this a lot, I'm just a baseball fan, no favorite team. But this one is very special. As we turn this around, you can see it is signed, Zach, all the best, Alex Rodriguez, number 13. Now this was one of many things that I got in exchange for snagging the baseball from his 3,000th hit and giving that to him. Let me show you a few more. Over here, we have my baseball bat collection. And I have a couple of A-Rod bats right over here. So, you can see the top one says Alex Rodriguez 3000, the bottom one says Zach, nice catch, 
Alex Rodriguez, 13. That's actually false. I didn't catch it. I picked it up off the ground, but nevertheless, I got that ball. So I have 13 bats here, and save all the hate. Oh, you should have them in tubes and get a display case. They're right here, and it also doubles as my middle-of-the-night protection in case of intruders. Just grab a bat and pow, pow, pow! You would think that somebody whose family owns a bookstore would have more books himself. Maybe if I get rid of all my VHS tapes, I'd have more shelf space. But, in the interest of pointing out the highlights, I have the three best books right here that have ever been written. pa -chow! Well guys, that's pretty much it for this apartment tour video. I'll just tell you a few more things. I've lived here for 10 years, so I've had plenty of time to dress it up and fill it up with my favorite objects in the world. If you're wondering, doing all the magazine pages took about two months, where I was basically doing it all day, every day, with every moment of free time. Same with the business cards in the half bathroom. That also took about two months. Now, I love having all this empty space. Of course, the furniture is pushed to the side, which means that you can only sit on one side of the table unless I pull it out, but it's worth it, because I love having all this room. I can work out here. I can swing a baseball bat here. It's great for parties. I love having people over. And the view, as much as I love this space inside, what I get to see out through these windows is really cool. The way these windows open up, they swing open into the apartment. Friends jokingly call them the suicide windows, but we try to be very careful around here. And you can see the Empire State Building, the Freedom Tower, way off in the distance through the smog. But yeah, New York City can be a very stressful place. I get that. It's definitely stressful for me at times. But home for me is one of the most relaxing and fun places in the world. So I'm always happy to spend time here and really happy to have shared this video for you guys. Thanks for watching.